Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel for another Flea Market Finds episode. And this is day two of the uh, Connecticut Fairgrounds swap meet that I attended on October 30th. So this is what I got on October 31st. Uh, the second day I went out, the sun was shining. So more dealers came out, so I got to see some more stuff. Still didn't get a huge haul, but uh, got some interesting things. Let's, uh, let's dive right in. So, um, one of the dealers had just boxes of junk, and I dug through, and I put together this pile, and I got this pile for 10 bucks, which includes uh, this sharpening stone in a wooden case. I did not see any markings as to who may have made it, so I don't... Oh yeah, no, this is a, uh, it's a combination gilt stone. I can't quite make out. Does look like it's made in the USA. Can't quite make out the symbol on that, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Stone. This little drill index. This is a Radnor. This interesting little vice marked Japan. And this, as is, condition unknown, got a lot of rust on it here, uh, do more hand grinder. So uh, these actually, when they work well, are nice little tools to have. They tend to uh, zip right along. This is the catalog number 8-021, uh, 18,000 RPMs, no load. So, let's go for some live action here. Oh, oh, oh that was an unhappy initial sound. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, it's getting better already. Eighteen thousand RPMs and it's not vibrating at all. Fantastic. That initial hesitation was probably, uh, judging from the surface rust I'm seeing on here, there was probably some contamination on the carbon brushes, and within a matter of seconds, they polish themselves clean, and that's working just fine. That that's actually great. I don't know what the heck on, is on here for a tip. It looks like a nail. Oh no, that's got some kind of a, I don't know, that's some kind of a composite material or something on there. should sell some of these. I have to, I actually have too many of those. But I can't I can't pass them up when I can get them for that kind of money. They're, they're fantastic little hand grinders. From the same dealer I scored that deal on uh, or from my later uh, I would have pi piled it in with everything else but I came across this. Uh, this is a Blue Point RC500 piston ring groove cleaner. I couldn't remember whether or not I already have one of these or not. Um, but this is exactly what it says it is. It's basically, it's a tool that is used to scrape the crud out of the grooves on your piston before you put new rings in. So, I mean, for the little bit of money that I paid for this, uh, even though I don't use these, this kind of a tool very often, it's for two bucks, it's certainly worth having it hang around my shop. Um, oh, and that same dealer, I found this hatchet in a box, and I looked at it and realized, oh, well, that's obviously, that's not the correct handle. It just has an old look to it. 
I know a guy who likes old hatchets and stuff like this, so I'll probably offer this off to him after I make sure that there isn't some kind of a, you know, secret code on here that indicates that it uh, belonged to Sitting Bull or something. But just a just an old hatchet, two bucks. This guy had this old soda bottle. Um, you know, I I shy away from. This kind of stuff nowadays but uh, caught my eye had a nice look to it hope club beverages uh, sparkling beverages delightfully different and what I liked was on the back here it said made under most sanitary conditions from purest flavors with added pure cane sugar and filtered carbonated water bottled by the Hope Beverage Company of Cranston, Rhode Island. So I just thought it was kind of a neat little bottle and when they agreed to take my buck for it, I couldn't resist. Well, I cleaned up this hatchet and it is marked with a maker's name, but it's so worn I can barely see what it says, but it says cast steel right there. Based on what I've found online, I would say that this is probably a rather unremarkable uh, hatchet that uh, I think this is a roofer's hatchet or something like that along those lines I think this notch right here is for pulling nails up maybe I don't know well anyways I'm only into it for two bucks and I, um, I think the guy I know will probably give me five for it so and then I uh, I went inside the building again that I was in yesterday and there was a guy who put out a bunch of stuff that wasn't there the day before and he had piles of stuff and he was really trying to get people to get, to get rid of stuff. He was really trying to... He, he basically told us, told me and the guys standing around there, fill a bag for a buck of all this crap that was on the, the blankets on the ground and you know I started looking down at it and I quickly realized hey there's a few things here and then I told him I said I'll tell you what I said I don't even want a bag for all I said but I'll give you a buck for what I found so look what I found first thing I spotted first I thought it was a screw jack then when I picked it up I realized oh no that's one of these bell punches and then sure enough rooted around through the other stuff laying there and lo and behold what do I find I find the correct pin for it so, no maker's name on it that I can see, but still, neat little bell punch. Uh, this little set of uh, inside calipers, and they are Sterrett's, and these are the Sterrett uh, Toolmakers series. So this is actually a nice little caliper. Uh, one of these funky verdict indicators and it's a little slow to return but it actually still works um, this is the unusual design that this can actually pivot 90 degrees and still work okay it's a stare at 564 as opposed to the verdict ones that I typically find so I'll stare at 564 vintage indicator that actually still works a little pair of snap ring pliers um, these are actually Walda's true arc plier number two but they're just you know just a pair of snap ring pliers but the thing is with these little snap ring pliers what tends to happen is uh, sometimes a pin the little pin on the end will break off so I was getting them for a buck less than a buck actually and then this this old caliper um, I just recently well, I think actually and yes in the the pick from the day before I think I showed you guys a pair of Starrett ones well these are darling brown and sharp so I think that makes these very early I think that means that um, Darling was a, uh, involved in the partnership with Brown and Sharp 
and then was uh, bought out or something. So th this is a very early collectible pair of calipers. So that might be a sleeper right there. Well, let me put it this way. I mean, I'm into it for less than a buck, so why not? Then I went uh, over to the table of the guy who I bought a bunch of stuff off from on that uh, previous day to see if he had brought anything new in, machinist-wise, and he did. Brought in a couple of things. He brought in this grinding wheel dresser. Uh, unusual looking one. So can do a radius on it. It's nowhere near as precise as the typical radius grinders. But I like it because it's you know it's not small enough that I can ship it fairly easily. And I'm sure I'll find uh, somebody who will want a reasonably priced radius dresser. Just double checking, but I'm pretty sure I didn't see any markings on it. So I have no idea who makes that. But I got that for five bucks. So that's a good deal. And then this... I really tried hard to get him to give me a deal on this, but he would not go below 15 bucks on this. And normally, you know, non sterret tap wrenches, I don't usually want to pay him very much for, but this one caught my eye because it's kind of a nice looking profile to it. Some nice turning here. Handles, shape of the handles, very sterret like. Um, and what this is, is this is a lightning tap wrench. And then it says uh, what the size is. Wiley and Russell Manufacturing Company of Greenfield, Massachusetts. So it caught my eye because, of course, Greenfield, Massachusetts is the home of Greenfield Tap and Die, which we find all the time, right? So I was wondering whether or not this was a early competitor that uh, got bought out or phased out or put out of business by these guys. The patent date, it says the patent date is... Uh, May 8th, 1883. So that's an early sucker. It actually still works perfectly fine, but it's more of a collectible, I think, than anything. It's an interesting design here. There's screws in the frame, which you never see. There's also a tiny hole here marked for oil. So you can oil the end of the, the screw where it goes into this block. Pretty cool. So that might be a sleeper. All right, coming down to the wire here. Uh, went back to the other table where I bought a couple of piles of machinist tools on my way out and made one last pile of stuff. And putting the other pile with this, uh, this no-name machinist clamp, this no-name little square. It's actually engraved with somebody's name, but there's no maker's name on it. Uh, this little tiny clamp, which I actually bought this in the off chance that it might fit one of those two uh, homemade vice or grinding jigs that I bought the day before. I haven't checked that yet. This little drill index. It's a nice little sterret. It's a... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Now, this is a Hyde Park manufacturing company of Hyde Park, Massachusetts. Uh, number drill gauge. Another one of these little Billings clamps. Well, it looks like a Billings anyways. Yeah, it is. It's a Billings. Billings and Spencer, I think. This little uh, bevel square. Don't see any maker's name on this. And last but not least is this little uh, depth mic that, um, you know, wasn't in a box, doesn't have any rods. But I just grabbed it because it was just so unusual looking. The knurling that somebody did on this. I've never seen anything like this. No maker's name whatsoever on this. So that's probably a one of a kind. <laughs> All right, guys, before I uh, wrap this up, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. The uh, no-name square that I've got right here, actually, it turns out it's just really, really hard to see, but it does actually say B&S, Providence, Rhode Island, so that's actually a brown and sharp. Uh, upon 
closer inspection, I can actually see that this says D, B, and S, Providence, Rhode Island, or Providence RI. So this denotes that this is also a Darling Brown and Sharp. So this predates um, when uh, the company split up or that, that there was a reorganization of the company that, and before they became Brown and Sharp. So this is another uh, little bit more collectible piece because of that fact. The drill gauge here, this drill and wire gauge, Hyde Park Manufacturing of Hyde Park, Massachusetts, I haven't been able to find another one anywhere. Uh, nothing on eBay from this company, other than maybe a couple of like prints from back in the 1800s of uh, iron workers or something like that. So pretty unusual, you know, one of those things rare, but not necessarily extremely valuable. And this brown and sharp, darling brown and sharp caliper is actually highly collectible. Uh, these trade for 50 bucks and up, I think, on uh, eBay from what I could see. All right, so I'm going to call that a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you are not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Take care.